I really enjoy your videos. I recently purchased a seat of Fusion to run my Morishiki. Oh, that's a cool mill. Um, still learning Fusion. Um, but I, so here's the question. I have a part that I'm currently doing that is round, sticking out of the main spindle with a pocket going through perpendicular to the center line axis. I would like to use a 90 degree chamfer mill to break the edge. I could use a 3D chamfer, but that will not give me a uniform result. Uh, what I really want is to use the rotary axis to chamfer with. Um, have you seen video? So let's do that. So we're gonna actually do four axis. This is four axis um, mill turn, or it also was maybe could be called live tooling. Let's take a look at this. So new model here and let's just um, go ahead and do C for circle and let's do a uh, 150 millimeter diameter and extrude this out. That's the round bar. And then John said that he has a pocket going through, through the center line. So we can draw up the center line if we want to, something like that. And we could do a pocket. Let's do a hit point to there. And I don't know how big we want to make this pocket. Maybe we make it 50 by 50. Eh, that's probably okay. I'm not going to fully define it, but let's just, uh, let's just blast that through here. Hold down left mouse button for a little, and you get this little menu here where you can select uh, profiles. And let's blast that through there. All right. So um, here is is this pocket we have going all the way through. Now, there's a couple of things I'm not 100% sure about with this part. Uh, but what I'm going to show today is what I hopefully you will find as a cool little trick. Uh, see, so most likely you have some inside corner radiuses also in this pocket uh, going through. But if you just, I don't know if you do that, you could be doing something like a sinker EDM or something. Uh, but if you go in here and do a, um, a chamfer, uh, what is really what we wanted to do, we wanted to do a, a chamfer We're using a 90 degree chamfer mill. If I go in here and select this edge and this edge, and I give them, I don't know, five, Notice um, what is happening in here uh, when you get in close. You see how there's a little section in here where these two are really not playing too nice with one another. And and and, and John, you're welcome to write me back. This is where we start talking about like what is it really we want and what is the end result we want. Uh, in here, what I personally probably would go for if I was going to do that, because I'm going to be using a 90 degree um, chamfer mill to, to chamfer around here, is this corner really just going to be a development, probably um, almost regardless of what corner radius we have in here. Um, so, what I would actually do, and this is, I think, is a good cam trick, I would actually delete this chamfer and not having it in my model. And I used to do that back when I was a Ridlam. I actually would many times just, I wouldn't have chamfers on my model. I knew as the programmer that there was going to be chamfers there and, and even the drawing might calling it out. Here's the cool thing. If we go in to um, manufacturer and let's go in and select the setup and we're going to go over here in the menu, we're going to select the turning or mill turn or live tooling, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, it, it sets it up for, for turning here. But if we just go ahead here and uh, go in and select the standard 2D contour, and let's go in and select that 90 degree tool. So I'm going to go into metric, and uh, I don't know which one of these I have here. I have a, a 45 degree chair from mill. Let me just double click on that. Um, let me just go ahead and check it here. Edit. This is right out of the, the tutorial library, right? So you would like to see that is not sharp. So I probably want a no tip. So now it's a sharp one. And now if it was a, if, so now I'm just going a little bit past John. If this was what I was going to do, I would now save this to my library. But we're just going to leave this one here. We're going to use this one. Okay. 
Uh, next, I'm going to go to the Geometry tab. And inside of the Geometry tab, you will see that there is a Wrap function. I checked that one. It's asking for a cylinder. I'm going to select this top cylinder here. And then it's asking for a contour selection. And I'm just going to select this selection right here. Now, remember when I'm talking, uh, and I've talked about before, about doing any kind of like when things gets hard inside of CAM, select a few things and just hit OK and see what you get. And what we actually see here is we are getting something that might look pretty close to what we want. Um, I'm actually going to go into my setup again, go to my post processing tab and uh, see how on the stock it has set the diameter, but it's fine, but it had rounded to the nearest. I don't know any. So I'm going to make the stock finished. Let's just process this. And let's simulate this. We can turn the stock on. And let's just see what we get when we are doing this. So this is definitely a, um, this is a four axis move, right? It's going to do that right on your machine. Of course, your post has to, uh, to support this. So we can kind of see this here. This looks decent. Now, it, of course, I just picked that ad. So right now it's actually not removing anything. It's just right on that, right on that edge. That's not good enough. But did you know that inside of the 2D contour, if the 2D contour toolpath sees a chamfer mill, then if you go to the passes tab, you will actually see that there is a chamfer section that normally don't appear for a standard end mill. So now we could go over here and say, all right, let's try to make a one millimeter uh, chamfer width and maybe one and a half tip offset. I'm not sure if this is good. I'm going to hit OK to see what I get. And that might look pretty good. Let's go back here and let's just simulate this. And now it looks like we actually get somewhere, right? Like we're getting a, um, a chamfer. Now, um, it's a little bit hard to see when I do this because I just get that raw stock. Um, but what I could do was I could go um, into my setup again. And instead of using this fixed stock, I could actually go and say from solid and just select this original stock we had here. Let it reprocess, regenerate. And then now if I go into simulate, now you will actually see we see that finished pocket, what is really what I want. Um, and let's try to slow it down a little bit. And now you will actually see that um, it looks better. Now, if you still are like, yeah, but now the solid kind of comes in the way. I still can't really see how it's going to look like. Uh, you could go into your model and just turn that off. Now you can actually see uh, the development better. You could also go in and change um, the material to... To something else in here if you feel like this should be better, a little bit better to look at so let's just run this backwards a little bit so now if we go in and we look at this corner here comes down and what it does is it creates that development right there because it's literally just driving that square and I think that 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 is most likely what most people I would think want is just to drive that and then bring that over there. And then whatever kind of like the corner is going to be is going to be a um, kind of like a development of that. That is definitely how um, I think that I would interpret that. John, um, you tell me um, if this is uh, if this is useful uh, to do kind of like those. Uh, chamfers if you're just looking to apply a chamfer to a part to a pocket like this uh, most likely you just kind of like want that that development happening there without too much uh, too much action so i hope this one was good i felt like that this one is uh, one of those that showed you maybe a couple of tricks that you didn't know that's the goal at least thumbs up if you like this thumbs down if you don't um just a quick little cam chamfering fourth axis tip there subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hope you found that useful